today. From the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. It's a special Christmas Day edition of the NFL on EA Sports. see Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints taking on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us in downtown New Orleans at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Minnesota Vikings. Saints, Will Lutz has it teed up, and here we go from New Orleans. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. The debate about Kirk Cousins continues to rage both among Vikings fans and fans around the league. But when you look at his numbers, you think this is one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Last year broke a string of four straight 4,000-yard passing years with the emergence of Dalvin Cook in the backfield. So while those numbers dropped, he was still solid throwing the football. 26 touchdown passes, just six interceptions. Now he's just got to develop an extra target on the perimeter in order to get his numbers back to the previous levels. First down, here's Cousins. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And now it's second down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Throwing his Cousins. Rush coming in taken down. Zach Bourne coming in hard there on the blitz and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Alright partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay and they breathed a sigh of relief on that sideline. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. 
So here come the Saints now for their first drive. And they'll be led out by the all-time leader in terms of passing yards in NFL history, their 41-year-old quarterback, Drew Brees. Now exactly the start to the 2019 season that Drew Brees anticipated when he injured his thumb against the Rams in Week 2 and forced him to miss five weeks. The Saints did go 5-0 during his absence, and when he came back, they didn't miss a beat. Rallied them to another division title and got them into the playoffs. And late in the season, passed Peyton Manning for the most career touchdown passes. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That's the receivers that'll spread the defense out and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. On second down, Kamara. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. But the Vikings and Saints, you might recall, they battled in the wild card round a season ago, and it was the guys in purple who came in and pulled off the upset with Kirk Cousins finding Kyle Rudolph in the end zone in overtime to sew up a 26-20 win. up to be incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Shotgun now for Breeze. And brought in by the tight end Cook. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a first down on a gain of 10. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. The run got four, now they deal with a second and six. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. From the gun, it's Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. They'll contain him to just four, second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. A four-receiver set here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and six. Now Breeze. He'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And he gets it down to the 32. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Absolutely. This early in the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, that should open up his running game, too. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them.
So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Breeze now. On the check down, he finds Camaro. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that could be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. They'll run it with Kamara. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. The ball mere inches from the white line on third and goal. They'll try to run it in. It's Kamara. As he's down to the two yard line. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. Can this defense hold them out? Here we go now. Fourth and goal from the two. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. So that'll back them up five. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Lutz puts this one through. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Cousins now to throw on first down to Jefferson on the slam. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. 
Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride. And he was able to run free after the catch. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. To throw, Cousins. Completes it to the fullback, Ham. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins, and this is gonna be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 38-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Uh, give the cork out of the gun. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to lead to a third down. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. from the gun on third and that's going to be incomplete the contact there enough to jar that ball free and it brings up fourth down from a defensive perspective they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football there was pressure on the quarterback they were getting after him and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And that will tie us at 3-3. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And they'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 22. He'll start with a give to Kamara. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up, 
They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Breeze. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. To throw, it's Breeze. Looking for Sanders here on the deep ball. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. Said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They start the drive with Cook. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. From the 24, Cousins throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Marshawn Lattimore right there on the coverage. He was draped all over it. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man when in coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Lewis to return. And he out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 21 yards, well done on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 46. And here's a throw that's taken in by the tight end, Cook. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Second and 12 now at the 44-yard line. Now Camara. He's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. A nice job there as he rumbles for nine. 
And it'll be back to a third and three. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. A 10th carry for Kamara. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there and it leads to a fourth down. Out on the edge, you love to have cornerbacks like that that can bring them down in the run game. And you're also exposed to everyone. It really becomes a one-on-one -on -one play, doesn't it? You're out there by yourself on the edge. The best ones know how to make the play, and we just saw an example of it right there. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now out comes Minnesota. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 22, here's second and eight. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. These two teams all tied after one. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. Now Cousins. Complete Jefferson the target. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time, they get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Cousins. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. That catch good for five. It's third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Play fake, Cousins. 
The throw complete to Beebe. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. A first down throw for Cousins. That's to Delvin Cook, his running back. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They run, Cook, and this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Play action, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. First red zone chance now for the Vikings. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. From the gun, here's Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. A gain of 6 there on first. This is a second and 4. Ball at the 9. Back to the ground. Cook. And from the 9, they get this to the 5-yard line. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And it's caught. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. They'll run for it with Cook, and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Taking it in from a yard out, and the Vikings have taken the lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. And it is up. 
And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. So that one a 13-play drive in total. And it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Kick it away after the touchdown. And here's Lewis. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Shotgun now for Breeze. Three going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And that will come the offense as they take over. And you see Dalvin Cook and the offense heading back out. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Marcus Davenport there to take him down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Off the play fake, Cousins. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. The Saints say they have it, and they do. He 
He was under duress, surveying, trying to find somebody to get the ball out of his hands. In the meantime, the defense, they took it out of his hands. And when the ball snapped, I know exactly what the defense is thinking. Get a sack, put him on the ground. But when you can also knock the ball free while doing so, oh, there's the bonus for you as a defender. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Breeze. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. I think we can all understand what they're thinking right now. They take over the ball in field goal range after the turnover, so they've got that in their hip pocket. But they've got to go for the end zone and turn this into a bigger point. Their thinking is a touchdown is really what they should get from starting here. Getting three points at the end of this drive, that would feel disappointing. Breeze finding Kamara, and he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. The rookie Cameron Dantzler picks it. And he's into the clear. 20, 10, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Third down, passing down. They throw the extra defensive back in there for a nickel package, and it worked out. And it's not anything that you would think is just great strategy. It's just that when you have five defensive backs on the field and an obvious passing down, it's a lot tougher to complete a pass. And on that play, they completed it just to the wrong team, and it cost them six points. Bailey now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And here's Lewis. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Getting set to go again here, the Saints and Drew Brees march out there again on offense. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10, right at the 30. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he gets this one complete to Trey Paul Smith. The 20, 10, touchdown! Smith, 67 yards, and the 
Saints are able to strike quickly for six. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. How uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Will Lott's on for the point after. And it's up through the goalposts. It's 17-10. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 23. He'll throw from the gun. Throw left side complete. It's Johnson. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. out of the gun. Cousins into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone and he got there in a hurry. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And he gets it to go, and we're all even. 17 apiece. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as it kicks away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And fresh off the pick six. They've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, 
He's got to be like what we talked about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount. Here's his opportunity. It all comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I don't know where that comes from. It just kind of emerges out of me for some reason. It's deep in there, right? <laughs> and he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. From the 30 on second down, Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Cook. Now that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. Second and 12, Cousins. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Johnson. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and four. The man is stealing his complaint. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A first down for Minnesota. Cousins finding Thielen. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. On the ground, it's Cook. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Cousins the thrower. That'll be complete to Cook. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Now that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. To throw is Cousins. And he finds Cook. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That'll go as a pickup of eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw, Cousins. And a quick throw here, that's complete. 
And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On second down now, it's Cook. And once more, this play going in the wrong direction. The Saints get to him behind the line again. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Marcus Davenport just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins getting a big sack. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins. And he's going to go down again. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free and it's fourth down. Normally being a big bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch. Take the hit and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. Well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So some disappointment? It's funny, we had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator, and what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. And here's Lewis. happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. 
He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and helped force the incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara, and he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been terrific so far. The return is Osborne. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Here's Kirk Cousins now, the centerpiece of our player spotlight. And he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they do something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much. Not if you intend to win. Yeah, I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back, the intended target. And it's second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Cousins. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Johnson the intended target and that takes us from second to third down not only did he have a chance to scan the field there it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice the protection was that good unfortunately for him the coverage downfield equally good this time they stay on the ground and that's not going to get it done he'll come up well short of the first at about the 21 the Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Big kick that time, 52 yards. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. Ready. 
Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we've reached halftime here. Charles has already thrown off his headset. He's out here. He says, it's Christmas Day. I'm going home. We're not done yet, though. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half for the veteran quarterback, Kirk Cousins. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game as we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. These offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? And here's Lewis. And he won't quite make it to the 25. You call it? We call it, baby. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, you, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is making sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. They start the second half with Kamara. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Here's Breeze to throw. He finds Latavius Murray. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. D.J. Wadham, he's the culprit, dropping him for a two-yard loss. Decided to keep it that time on the option, got out left, but the defense was right there. And you know what happened on that play, right? Because the defense, as you said, not letting him get upfield, no place for him to ever duck his shoulders and turn upfield and gain yardage. Had to keep moving out laterally. Nice play by the defenders. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. On the ground, Kamara. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Brad, in all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Breeze. The open man is Smith. They're able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. That third down conversion good for 23. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. 
I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Now Breeze on the bootleg. Over the middle to Smith. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. down is Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Camaro. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Give him seven on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now it's Kamara in the passing game. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Shotgun now for Breeze. They still can't get it. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Lux's kick is good. And that's going to tie things at 20. So they come away from this opening drive of the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. 
But here, you get back on even terms, and now you've got most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Now K.J. Osborne. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. A good run there by Cook on first down, powering his way forward, a gain of six. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. The last run got six, now second and four. From the gun, here's Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And this will be a Vikings first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. And it's pretty evident when you watch how Minnesota plays, just how important Dalvin Cook is to their offense. A thousand-yard rusher a year before, the first one the Vikings had since Adrian Peterson was dominating their carries. And having Cook in the lineup for the bulk of the season, that made Minnesota exactly what their head coach Mike Zimmer wanted them to be. A much more physical team that complemented their defense. Cousins on first down. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And Cook has it, left side. Three yards the gain there, second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. <laughs> Throwing his Cousins. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Janoris Jenkins with good coverage that time as he was able to get in there and knock it away. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Again, it's Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. 
Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Cousins again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Justin Jefferson, the rookie, his intended receiver. But it'll be second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. To the air again, it's Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. A gain of 13, it's a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. First down throw for Cousins. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. David Onyemata able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Cousins now. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This is a 49-yard attempt, right hash. Uh, this has neither the distance nor the accuracy. It's no good, and we will remain tied here in this third quarter. field comes Traquan Smith and the rest of the offense. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. Breeze now on first down. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And finally brought down at the 
43. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. and 10, here's Breeze. And complete right side to Cook. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Three yards the gain there, second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Four receivers now in the formation. Three to the left, one to the right on second and seven. defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes and here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone and this one basically comes right to him Dalvin Cook taking the field for the Vikings next possession he's had a good performance moved the ball effectively on the ground of course he has the one touchdown and when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 37. <laughs> Following the interception, Cousins. He stiff arms him. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. three up to midfield give credit to the defense for stringing that play out and they gave up no cutback angle you know he was trying to dart through no place for him to go a nice job there only giving up a three yard gain they run it again with Cook and good penetration here he'll get this down only to about the 49 yard line they had three yards on first down, just one yard there. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And it is incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Yeah, he 
is going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. We are off to the fourth quarter here on this special Christmas Day broadcast. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Jared Cook, his Pro Bowl tight end, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Camara. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. The Saints on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Breeze. Pitch and catch here to Cook. And he's going to be taken down at the 39. Clearly short of the first by a few yards. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 20. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Again, it's Cook. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now this window is running back out of the backfield. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Yeah. 
first down. Here's the run with Cook. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Keep it on the ground. Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Four yards the pick up. First down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Here's Cousins. And Rudolph has it left side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll run on first down. It's Cook, down to the 30 after a gain of three. Really good stop there by David Anyamata, a very productive player for the New Orleans Saints. And how about this for a value pick? Fourth rounder back in 2016. From the 30 on second down, Cousins completing it to the right side. Johnson, only three yards on the catch. It's third down. From the gun, here's Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. Field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Throwing. Cousins. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back in the 16-yard line. David Onyemata able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. To throw is Cousins. 
And this will be incomplete. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, only thing larger than his name, is wingspan as he knocks that one away. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time, separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he'll take this one down near the 15. Only able to pick up a yard, and that's going to leave him with a long fourth and goal. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. Bailey's kick is good. And the Vikings have a 3 0 lead. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. And here's Lewis. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10, right at the 30. He'll set up the throw from the gun. And brought in by the tight end call. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They start the drive with Cook. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Throwing his cousins. And incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Working out of the gun, Cousins. 
Now he's going to go deep down the line. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And he will finally be taken out of bounds. A big play for the Vikings on third down. 44 yards. I love the poise in the pocket right here. Protection, absolutely sensational. And he's able to use that protection to scan the field, make sure his receiver came open, and then deliver a perfect pass. That was beautiful. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a run with Cook. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. No yardage to speak of whatsoever. Leads to a third down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily, you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Cousins. That escapes his... But he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Marcus Davenport picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So a big kick coming now for Dan Bailey. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. And here's Lewis. up across the 25 and down at the 28. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And that last turnover could have proven more costly, but their defense only gave up three. But now answering with a field goal doesn't do them much on this drive. They need to try and find the end zone. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. And it's incomplete. Traquan Smith, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. I want to go back to something you said in the first quarter. Is, about it, winning. is, is it a positive? It is a positive. Okay. About winning the turnover battle. As a visiting <laughs> team, as an underdog, you were right. They've done just that, and look where it's gotten them. It's part of the formula. When you go on the road, as you mentioned, being an underdog, winning the turnover battle is a big key, and this one's playing out in this one. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. 
Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? The Saints on third down, just a 20% success rate at two of ten. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Breeze. Incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that kicks first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. No gain on the play there. Second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back, tell him to take care of the ball, and try to move forward. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Oh, they come after him, and it's... Oh, that is going to be a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. Fielded at the 20. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll throw from the gun. 
Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Bree's going to throw. Over the middle to Smith. He'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards to pick up there. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Breeze now on first down. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. So first and 10 now from the 30. Again, it's Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make this a second down. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. The Saints in the hurry up here. Clock continuing to roll. They'll look to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Seven yards there and a first down. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. Breeze, one of the best ever in these situations as he's trying to get his guys set. Now, Breeze again. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. It's Breeze getting it into the hands of Traquan Smith. And once again, the Saints are back out in front. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not, you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive in total eight plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off.
And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So Cousins and the Vikings down by a field goal a little under a minute to go. They've surrendered a double-digit lead but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Get this one down to Cook. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll make it a second down. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. Now Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. The Vikings get a signal for their first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. to Beebe. That catch good for only a couple. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Cousins to throw. And this one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, but now it'll be third down. will use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ball game. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. He's back to throw. This is Johnson. He's got it. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. fake Cousins he's gonna let it fly and that is incomplete two seconds left on the clock they were looking for Johnson that time and that'll bring up second down So they are going to call on Dan Bailey here. His career long is 56 yards done in Seattle. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So they are going to call on Dan Bailey here. 
His career long is 56 yards done in Seattle. With two seconds left in regulation, this to force overtime. And this doesn't get there. It's no good. They had to go for it, but their final effort here is going to come up short. So this one, a victory here for New Orleans. And they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, Pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away. Taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.